Okay, so today we're going to be looking at some sequence problems and they're going to be a bit harder than usual. Um, so for first off, we've got this formula. So un is equal to n squared minus 1. This is our sequence. And the problem is to prove that the 2nth plus 1, 2n plus 1th term in the sequence is a multiple of 4. So this number right here just represents an odd number. So we need to prove that all the odd numbers, starting at 3, um, they are multiples of 4 in this sequence. So the first step might be to plug in some numbers into this formula and get a sense of what it looks like. So if we plug in n is equal to 1, 2, and 3, for example, we're going to get 0, uh, 3, and then 3 squared minus 1 is 8. So already we see that the 2n plus 1, if we put n is equal to 1, then we get 3. So the third term is a multiple of 4 here, so 8 is 2 times 4. And we should see that all uh, following odd number terms are going to be multiples of 4. And we want to prove this is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number here and we're going to let k equal to 2n plus 1. So this is just simplify the notation and we're going to represent our odd number by k. And to prove that this term is a multiple of 4, we're just going to substitute this number into the formula. So we want to show that uk, or u 2n plus 1, this is a multiple of 4. So by the formula, we get uk is equal to k squared minus 1. And then we also know that k is equal to this stuff. So k is equal to 2n plus 1 squared minus 1. So it might be a bit confusing that we're using n in the term and n in the formula. And this is just why we're using k is equal to 2n plus 1. It just makes it a bit simpler and it's just a way of um, assigning a value to this number. And now we see that this term that we're interested in, uk, this, we have this formula now. So now we're going to expand out these brackets. And if we do this, we get 2n all squared plus 2n times 2, if we were to expand this out. And also 1 here at the end of this bracket. And then we've still got the minus 1 from before. So now just simplifying this, we get 4n squared plus 4n, and the 1 and the minus 1 are going to cancel out. And then you can see that both these numbers are multiples of 4. And we can just do one more step and factorize out the 4 out. So 4 times n squared plus n. I mean, we could also factor out the n, but it isn't too important. But now we see that this term, the uk term, this is a multiple of 4. So for every, num every value of n, we plug in here, this is going to be a number, but it's also going to be multiplied by 4. So this is how to prove that this sequence um, has multiples of 4 in the odd terms. Okay, for the next problem, we are given a sequence, and this is generated by a quadratic formula. And the problem is to prove that all the terms in the sequence are positive. And a bonus question would be to work out what the smallest number in the sequence is. So we're given a quadratic and we can visual, visualize this on a plane and it's going to be a parabola and we want to prove that it's positive. So we want to prove that it's above the horizontal axis. So if the horizontal axis represents n, these are our term numbers. So 1, 2, 3, etc. And then on the y-axis or the vertical axis, this is going to be un. So this is the value of this um, sequence at that term. And we want to prove that this curve is always above the horizontal axis. And we are given a quadratic, so a tool that you might be familiar with is to complete the square. And this is going to allow us to find where the minimum is. And if this minimum is above the horizontal axis, then we know that all the terms are positive. So if we take this quadratic equation, n squared minus 10n, plus 27, and we want to complete the square. So we take the first number here, we just write n, and then we look at the coefficient in front of the n term, and we divide it by 2. So 10, minus 10 divided by 2 is minus 5. And then we write the brackets here, and we square this. So now if we were to expand these brackets out, we'd get the n squared back. We'd also get a minus 10n back, but we also get this term in here squared. So we get a plus 25. So we need to subtract off that 25. And now this expression right here gives us the n squared minus 10n. 
and then the last term we've forgotten about is the 27 so we need to uh, bring this down again and we have to write plus 27 at the end so now these two statements are equivalent and we can just simplify this a bit so we have n minus 5 squared and we also have minus 25 plus 27 this is just plus 2 so this is the completed square form of this uh, formula and we can see that we have a number squared and this is always non-negative it's going to be zero or positive positive. and we've also got a positive number so we've got a non-negative number and we've got a positive number and that can only result in a positive number so this is how to prove that this sequence only produces positive terms and now for the additional question of what is the smallest term well we've got this function here that squares uh, the numbers inside the bracket and the smallest value that we can reduce this term to is zero right so if you make this bracket equal to zero that's the smallest it can be and so we let n is equal to five and then this bracket right here so then n minus five is obviously equal to zero but also n squared minus n minus five squared that's also equal to zero and by doing that that is minimizing this function right here so this term goes to zero and we're just left with two so then we also get that u5 is equal to 2. And this is the minimum term in the sequence. So we've proven that the sequence has only positive terms, and we've also found the smallest term in that sequence. OK, so this is going to be the final problem. And we are given a sequence. Um, this is a linear sequence, so a n plus b. But we've got constants a and b that we don't know what they are. And the problem is going to be to find a and b. But we're also given two bits of information, that the third term is equal to 14 and that the fifth term is equal to 38. So we've got uh, a sequence of two unknowns and we're given two bits of information. So we should be able to find out what these constants are. So to solve this problem, we're just going to input these numbers into the formula. So if we do this, we have that the third term is equal to 14. So we have that u3 is equal to 14 but by the formula this is also equal to 3a plus b just by letting n is equal to 3 in the formula and similarly we can do this for the other term as well so we have that u5 is equal to 38 but this is also equal to n is equal to 5 so 5a plus b and now if we ignore these terms here then we have a system of linear equations, right? We've got two equations with two unknowns, and we can solve this uh, using lots of different methods. Um, I'm gonna label this equation one and equation two. Um, we can see that both equations have a B term in them. So if we just subtract one from the other, this is gonna disappear. So if we do two minus one, equation two minus equation one, and we look at both sides on their own. So we, if we look at the left-hand side here on uh, both equations, so we're going to have 38 minus 14 on the left-hand side. So we've subtracted the left-hand side from equation 2 uh, by the uh, left-hand side from equation 1. And if we also do this for the right-hand side, we get 5a plus b minus the right-hand side of equation 1, which is 3a plus b. And now we can just simplify this. So 38 minus 14, that's going to be 24. And then the b's are going to cancel out here, and we're going to be left with 5a minus 3a, that's just 2a. So we get that a is equal to 12, just by dividing by 2. So we're halfway there, and the second part of the problem is to work out what the value of b is. And we can just do this by substituting a into one of these formulas, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, let's do it into the first one. So if we go up here and we take the first equation, we have 14 is equal to 3a. But a is now 12, that's the bit of information we've learned, and we also have b, so this is what we're trying to find out. And now we can just rearrange to find out what b is, and we get 14 is equal to 36 plus b, and then just by subtracting 36 off both sides, we get b is equal to 14 minus 36, and this comes out as minus 22. So this problem was quite interesting because it was bringing different areas of maths together. We found the values of a and b in the sequence, 
by solving a system of linear equations.